Hi everyone, my name is Daria Mezza. I teach at Johns Hopkins University and I will be presenting the second session on high leverage practices in blended language teaching. First of all, let's have a quick overview of what we are going to talk in this session. First of all, we are going to talk about the relevance of the four high leverage practices. Um, in the previous session, my colleague Fernando Rubio had defined them as a small set of core practices that are widely accepted and supported by research. Now, in this session, we're going to look at high leverage practice number one. We're going to look at research findings, at micro practices, and example of practices. We are going to also describe high leverage practice number two, research findings again, micro practices, and example of practices. I must say that this presentation is highly technical and it may seem difficult at first. This is because of the complexity of high leverage practices in their characteristics. I have organized, however, and break out all this dense information into charts and graphs that I recommend to review individually. And feel free to ask for clarification of any doubts by emailing me. Now, many recommendations for interpreting and implementing the remaining high leverage practices that I will be stressing in these sessions are included in my research work with my colleague, Fernando Rubio. The title is Creating Effective Blended Language Learning Courses. If you wish to consult this work or other resources, I would recommend to please follow the directions I will be providing in the last slides of this presentation. Let's have a look at the first, um, actually at all four high leverage practices. You have already seen high leverage practice number three, enhancing teaching presence through design, facilitation, and direction. High leverage practice number four, creating opportunities for interaction and negotiation of meaning. Uh, with me, we're going to see high leverage practice number one, maintaining an effective blended path, and high leverage practice number two, fostering autonomous learning. Now, their relevance is highly accepted and supported by research because they built on one another, because they're based on the consideration of the theories of learning, and more specifically, because they're based on factors that are central to blended learning and second language acquisition principles that we know are crucial for language learning in formal settings. Now, as done by my colleague, Fernando Rubio, in order to facilitate your interpretation and future implementation of each of the proposed high leverage practices, I will present each remaining, number one and number two, following three main steps. So we will first look at a brief theoretical justification that is based on research findings and that helps justify the generalizability of each of the two high leverage teaching practices I will present. Then I will articulate and deconstruct each practice into components to make them useful for you when you teach. And finally, I will provide a practical example of the implementation of each of these two high leverage practices with a special emphasis on how the different micro practices form a teachable unit that blends, mix, face-to-face -face and online component. Let's have a look at H uh, high leverage practice number one, maintaining an effective blended path. Let's have a look at the terminology. Through the blending process, the resulting blended path that is the combination of online and face-to-face -face environments becomes a coherent and cohesive path in which online and face-to-face -face work together in a very seamless way to facilitate 
the achievement from the students of the learning outcomes against which you want to assess their progress. In the previous session, you have learned that taking advantage of the specific affordances, this would the term used by my colleague Fernando Rubio, of each of the two delivery formats, online and face-to-face, and organizing tasks in a way that maximizes those affordances constitute the key to the success of a blended path. At the same time, I would stress the importance in this session that you make sure that the two components of the course complement each other and lead the students through a seamless learning path. Students shouldn't realize that the course has a face-to-face -face and the course has an online component because online tasks are directly dependent and connected to the task proposed for the classroom and vice versa. So such continuous blended path must offer opportunities for high leverage practices, communication, interaction, and feedback. Let's see how. Let's deconstruct the practice. I have divided these first high leverage practices into three micro practices, all of which revolve around the goal of building this continuous, seamless blended path in which students progress. And you can monitor to make sure that students are not falling behind, which is the preoccupation we have in the online component. The first micro practice is providing and fostering communication in both components of the blended path. How can I do that? What is my role as a teacher to do that? Well, in a blended path in which the two components are planned sequentially, the layering of tasks and delivery modes need to achieve two important goals. First, you as instructor shouldn't feel as you are teaching two separate courses, one online and face-to-face. -face. Secondly, your students need to feel that all components work in harmony. It is not unusual, let me give you an example, for students in blended courses to describe them as a regular course that meets half the time and has lots of homework. But the online component is not homework. In order to avoid this reaction, a blended language course should have a perfect flow between the in-class and out-of-class task and assignment. An effective way for you to create this flow is to prepare the learner for the face-to-face -face portion of the class and then use some of the in-class tasks to lay the groundwork for what students will do online. For example, you can use brainstorming questions to explore the topic online before the face-to-face -face session. This can also be accomplished by engaging in regular communication with students. For example, providing detailed instru instructions before and quick clarifications during activities and tasks, especially in the online component in which students feel the isolation and helplessness typical of the online environment. And students do not have access to you as they do in face-to-face. -face. This can be also accomplished by providing your students with opportunities for engaged communication. Engaged communication in the online component of the three modes of communication includes interpersonal, two ways, synchronous communication, includes interpretive, reading, viewing, and listening, and presentation when the students present to the rest of the class, one way production just as they would do in the face-to-face -face communication. So yes, it is possible also in the online component to ask students to practice the three modes of communication, interpersonal, interpretive, and representational. So we will look at how we can foster opportunities for engaged communication in both components of the course. The second deconstruction of the practice or micro practice 
involves assuring a balance of different types of interaction, not only communication, therefore, but also interaction in the blended path. In the spirit of the seamlessness of the blended path, you should propose activities as a series of steps that combine all types of interaction, both face-to-face -face and online. Tasks and activities that you design need to give students the opportunity to interact in a so-called community of learners. What does it mean? Tasks and activities should propose teacher-student interaction, student-student interaction, and student-content interaction, which facilitates learner autonomous skills. So beside the autonomous skills provided by student content interaction, you should provide student-student interaction and teacher-student interaction in the spirit of a community of learning. The third micro practice, the micro practice number three, consists in providing student monitoring through opportunities for feedback throughout the learning path. Feedback, both confirmative and corrective, is another crucial ingredient in the acquisition of a, of a second language. So incorporating feedback in the learning path, rather than you adding it as a separate component or at the end of it, when it is of limited value, provides a sense of continuity and integration and provides a sense of presence. You may remember at this point, the high leverage teaching practice that Fernando Rubio mentioned about the teacher presence. So a feedback should be a regular component of the blended path. Feedback should take diverse forms and come from a variety of sources. In a task-based language teaching framework, for example, in which the tasks in a blended path are built as a sequence of steps that lead to a final product or project, incorporating feedback from the beginning and throughout the process will have a very positive effect on the final product of your students. So you can propose a variety of feedback. You can engage your students in self-generated reflection, but also to feedback provided from you and their peers. Instructor feedbacks, your feedback provides learner with critical information about meeting course goals, performance expectations that peer feedback cannot give. So in the online component, feedback may occur between the learner and instructor through verbal and written exchanges. But an online component is also an ideal component for peer-generated feedback. I know some of you may at the beginning feel reluctant to give your learners the responsibility to provide feedback to their peers, but you can provide them sample rubrics that can provide the necessary guidance to make peer feedback a valuable and objective tool. I strongly recommend and follow up with me in, in, if interested the use of rubrics throughout the blended path to guide your students to facilitate the feedback process. Let's have a look at an example of interpretive communication in the online and in the face-to-face -face component of the blend. In the following three slides, one, two, and three, I will illustrate an example of an effective blended path in a typical task-based language teaching based unit in an intermediate level Spanish course. Activities are layered in such a way that the teacher provides opportunities for the three modes of communications in both components of the course, assures a balance of different types of interaction in group, in pairs, with the teacher, individual with the content. And finally, the teacher provides students monitoring and opportunities for teacher, peer-to-peer, -peer, and group feedback. So let's have a look at the first one. In this project-oriented unit, students have to demonstrate mastery with a final project, 
that requires the use of language to achieve a non-linguistic goal. Of online, if you look at the middle column in here, students receive an authentic travel text and are asked questions to identify main and supporting idea and to infer meaning of new vocabulary from context. The text can be written, can be an audio, can be a video. In the face-to-face, -face, please look at this last column, students receive a different authentic travel test, text and are individually assessed in class on their ability to identify main and supporting ideas and infer meaning of new vocabulary. So handwritten word and sentence level answers will be requested. So in this case, topic, type of material and techniques used online and face-to-face -face are the same. So students are better prepared for their face-to-face -face meeting because whatever is used online previously is consistent with what is used in the online component. The next is interpersonal communication. I remind you that interpersonal communication sees students engage in a two-way synchronous communication, face-to-face um, -face in small groups or pairs, Instructor assigns activities for students to interact with the two authentic travel texts. Activities requiring interaction ask uh, students, engage students in conversation, asking and expressing preferences around transportation, lodging, sizing, and dining options. Instructors may assign participation grades in this case, may provide immediate teacher feedback as a follow-up homework to prepare for the online components. Students record their discussion on their cell phones and upload to a language, uh, sorry, a learning management system. This can be Blackboard, Moodle, or Canvas. Online, and we can see in this column, the students will follow up what they have done in class, review three other groups on the learning management system. They basically they review the recordings. Students are provided by the teacher that a pre-prepared in advanced interpersonal rubric created with a rubric creator that targets intermediate profi uh, proficiency. The rubric is used to assess three other pairs as well as to assess students, partner, and self. So as you can see, face-to-face -face and online nurture each other through the medium of a homework. In the presentational communication, I remind you that presentational communication sees students engage in one-way production. In the face-to-face -face component, the teacher models a hypothetical travel agent that is promoting a trip and presenting travel options to a Spanish-speaking uh, country or a community and using a PowerPoint presentation. This PowerPoint presentation is directed to a group of students who are considering different travel abroad options. The instructor checks comprehensions and provides feedback when appropriate. The teacher modeling can be recorded and students provided with homework that requires them to listen and record to the, sorry, to listen to the recording on language management system that again can be the, your Blackboard, your Canvas, your Moodle. Online, it is now the student turns to work in pairs and prepare their own PowerPoint presentation according to the model that the teacher had provided. It's their turn to promote a trip to different Spanish speaking countries. The product, their presentations, will be peer-reviewed 
with a peer review available in the learning management system. In this case, you can provide your students with an intermediate proficiency presentation of rubric that you will have created in advance using the LMS rubric creator. This is a, a feature available, available in all LMS. Please again, ask me for questions at the end of this presentation by contacting me by email if you're interested in doing that. Let's move on to the high leverage practice number two, fostering autonomous learning. Let's have a look at the research findings first, what we mean by autonomous learning, what we mean with the concept of independence and interdependence, and what the ideal framework guiding the teacher provision of autonomous learning opportunities in the blended learning course. First of all, learner autonomy should not exclusively consist of solitary contact with learning materials and individual tasks. Students in autonomous learning are not learning by themselves. Researchers such as Benson, Pemberton, Pearson had already suggested the idea that autonomous learning is not synonymous with self, study or independent study. That means studying by yourself. Rather, an instructor in a blended language learner course should encourage both self-directed learning and socially mediated learning. What do these two terms mean? I consider here the double channel model as an ideal framework to guide the teacher providing autonomous learning and not self or independent learning. The model is based on the assumption that learner autonomy is more than an intrapersonal solitary process and includes also social dimension with collaboration with peers. How can we apply this model? To apply this model, it is useful for us to follow Blinz. I apologize, there is a typo here. Blinz, B-L-I-N, use of independence. I will correct it later on. Use of the concept of independence when the student takes responsibility for his or her own learning by setting teaching objectives and interdependence. Interdependence means when the student interacts with peers and instructors. So we need to make sure the students are independent and interdependent. Independent when the students take responsibility and interdependent when they interact with peers and instructor. Let's deconstruct the practice. This high leverage practice fostering autonomous learning is divided only into two essential micro practices that focus on how to facilitate learner control and foster autonomy on the one hand and how to promote online socially mediated collaborative learning on the other. Let's give them opportunity for self-directed learning in the online component. How can I do that? I can ask my students to share responsibility for learning. You can encourage learning autonomy while working with the input of the lesson. The input is main video, an audio, or a written text you propose in the lesson. You can let students work at their own pace and select input, choose material and activities based on their preferences or interests. You will still be able to plan the necessary help or scaffolding, but you're gonna share the scaffolding with them. In the online component, scaffolding may mean student pausing, rewinding and playing sections of a video or audio recording, looking up a definition in a reference website or searching the internet for information on a topic with appropriate keyword, or even using, using visuals such as organizers, tables, charts, and graphs. When I will be finishing 
with this presentation, I will let you use the visuals and the organizers and the tables I have prepared for you in order for you to use this video and audio recording at your own pace. This will be an autonomous use of the material because this material will be already presented and will be scaffolded later on by the instructors with a continuous correspondence by email I have offered you. Example of activities then can be matching, true, false, ordering that you will be doing as a follow-up of this presentation. You can work at your own pace, you can select the input by rewinding this video, and we can scaffold together based on the learning needs through the, an email correspondence. In the second micro practice, you provide opportunities for collaborative tasks that focus on social immediate learning. How? Although you may think that collaborative activities are only possible in the face to face component of blended courses. Collaboration and teamwork should not be limited to the in-class face-to-face component, but also incorporated into online component of the blended path. As a matter of fact, the online component can provide many opportunities for collaboration, in which students and teachers help and scaffold each other. Through the activities of high leverage practice number two, you should require students to work in collaborative virtual spaces, in person, in groups, made accessible through collaborative pages such as wikis, for example, pbworks.com, or collaborative mind mapping tools in order to create a mind map together, or in order to create a presentation together in VoiceThread. In order to complete the activities, students may need to support each other by communicating and providing feedback in the target language. But they can also build opportunity for collaboration and you can provide feedback. This is your role of a teacher, maybe after their presentation. So the activities in these next two slides are taken from the online component of a blended intermediate mid Spanish course and can be implemented effectively in a blended language learning path with a participatory structure to foster autonomous learning. More specifically, the required learners to advance through stages that give them opportunities for self-directed learning through this brainstorming activities for exploring the topic and socially mediated learning in order to access and understand input as we will see in the next slide. Here the question, this is a brainstorming activity abroad without documents in which students are engaged in answering questions formulated to expose to the video input proposed on the right hand side of the screen. This brainstorming activity, Uvia de Ideas, requires a post to the class Padlet, a virtual bulletin board in which students get familiar with the keyword immigrant. The question one, what comes to mind when you hear the word immigrant? activate previous knowledge of the topic. Question two, are there undocumented immigrants in your country? The question three, if so, where are they from? And advanced hypothesis, like in question five, which do you think are the most common ways in which undocumented immigrants enter the country? Students can watch the video, if they click on the video on the right hand side. Um, in order to prepare for the in-class presentation on the topic of immigration, the teacher can provide students with additional sources of video and print input to consult in order to prepare for the discussion. These sources can also include vocabulary, paraphrase, 
series. This is an example of self-directed learning activity because the students may or may not need to consult these extra resources. But the teacher grant a certain degree of autonomy by letting the students select in materials based on their interests and based on their needs. In the next slide, you can see the following group writing activity. In group of three, write a story for this comic strip in which students work in team with designated roles. The facilitator, the coach, and the group reporter. The facilitator leads the team to complete the assignment in a timely and collaborative fashion. The coach guides or recommends resources and strategies for completing the assignment. And the group reporter is in charge of writing the story in the delivery medium. And this activity can be completed using a digital storytelling tool that is available for free on the web. Cartoonist, Go Animate. So, in conclusion, the session of high level practices, both by Fernando Rubio and myself, have provided the description of a blended path of offline, face to face, and online remote components grounded on second language acquisition research and equipped with a participatory, or let's call it social design. This provides opportunity for students to access input, your video, your audio, your main reading for the lesson, while developing both autonomous and collaborative learning skills within the learning community of practice and producing output and negotiating meaning with you and the other students. We can conclude, however, that the provision of such opportunities is challenging for you as a teacher because you need to teach in the online remote component of the blend, often asynchronously. We justify the design of a blended path, the one I just presented, that provide guidance and support to your students through autonomous learning. Let them have the time to think, let them have the time to reflect, let them have the time to choose the best path for them but also you need to design interactive collaboration as a preparation or a follow-up of the communicative tasks mainly proposed on the online and face-to-face -face component i thank you very much and I, my contact for further questions is dmitsa1 at jhu.edu in this, this last slide, I also added further resources. There is an article that has been published recently on high leverage practices for blended language learning. In this article, you can find information that I have provided in this session and that Fernando Rubio has provided in his first session. There is a whole book in creating effective blended language learning courses that is going to come out in March 2019. This is a research-based guide from planning to evaluation. There is another article in case you teach Italian as foreign language with theoretical background and pedagogical application, both in the North American and European higher education context. This is a special issue of Italian Canadiana that just came out. In the meantime, I thank you very much for your attention. I recommend you to review with calm and pace high leverage practice number one three, auton fostering autonomous language learning, and ask me whatever question and doubts you may have. Thank you.